This is a story of the sea and of ships and of the men who sailed in them. Wooden ships and iron men they were, billowing sails and frigates and running fast against the wind. Britannia ruled the waves with the British Royal Navy and her sailors. They were tough in those days, hard as ship's biscuits. Life on board was harsh. Men were at sea for years against all odds. It took a rare kind of courage to brave uncharted waters with monsters of the deep, and sometimes on board too. There was deprivation, disease, harsh discipline, and death at your elbow. It was more than a nine to five job. Of course they got paid, but it wasn't what you and I would call a salary. Well, you might ask, why did so many stick it for so long? Love of the sea, perhaps? A desire for adventure? Maybe. The answer lies partly in this bottle. A bottle containing three centuries of naval history. The Pusser's Rum. For the daily issue of half a pint of the finest rum went a long way to compensate for the terrible hardships that sailors endured. It all started around 1655 with the capture of Jamaica when the Royal Navy started to issue rum to its men. Until then, beer had been the shipmates' drink on board, but with long voyages it often didn't keep well. Rum, however, did. It was easier to store, and its reviving powers were even more welcome than beer. So began a great naval tradition. Twice a day, the daily ration or tot of rum was issued to seamen in a ceremony that lasted for the next 300 years. The rum was collected from the ship's stores, under the purser's control. As it was issued by him, it was called the purser's rum. But over time, the word purser was corrupted to parser, hence the name Purser's rum. Originally, it was served neat, but half a pint of neat rum didn't make for good discipline on board ship. And in 1740, the tradition of mixing it with a quart of water to half a pint of rum started at the instigation of Admiral Vernon to prevent drunkenness on board. His nickname was Old Grog, from the Grogram coat that he wore, and thus the watered-down rum became known as Grog. It was so valuable a commodity on board ship that a drink from a mate's rum ration was a sign of great favor, worth more than money. In time, rum became a second currency, with a language of its own. Sippers meant a small polite sip, gulpers meant a large swallow, and Sandy Bottoms was an invitation to finish off whatever was left in a friend's mug. The daily talk continued through the 18th century, the 19th century, even through the two world wars of this century, right up until the 31st of July, 1970. Black Top Day. On that day, the rum ration came to an end in the Royal Navy. It was the end of one tradition, but the beginning of another, because now the Pusser's rum is available again. But this time, not just to serving officers and men in the Royal Navy, but to all of us. And now the Royal Navy rum money goes into today's Royal Navy Sailors Fund for Naval Charities, with a substantial royalty from each bottle of Pusser's rum too. So the Pusser's rum continues a centuries-old tradition as the only rum prepared to exactly the same admiralty recipe and standards as it always has been. It's a unique blend of six luscious Caribbean rums, each one specially selected for its individual smoothness, flavor, color, and mellow depth. And it's still blended to the admiralty strength of 95.5 degrees proof spirit. You can sip it on its own with some ice, in true Royal Navy fashion, mixed with two parts of water, the real grog, or as any one of dozens of wonderful cocktails. That's the story of the Passer's Rum. A blend of three centuries and six rums, as much a part of Royal Navy tradition as the sea itself. <laughs>